Well, Razorback fans, it looks like there's a little bit of a coaching change on the Razorback football side of things. How, why, and what does it mean? Let's talk about it on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And hey, welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today. Hope everybody had an absolutely wonderful, wonderful Christmas. No, it's been a few days since we've been able to catch up with one another. And uh, I know that for me, it was a very lovely Christmas and a long weekend and much, uh, much appreciated. And honestly, uh, just spending time with family and friends and loved ones and giving gifts and receiving gifts and all that, you know, it's always just great to have and Christmas movies and Christmas decorations, all that stuff. So it was really great for me and I hope it was really great for you uh, just uh, over the past few days. But there, of course, knowing that how Arkansas just kind of operates when it comes to any sort of news, it's always ongoing, especially as we get closer to the end of the year. And Arkansas has had some news, some news. And this actually transpired on Tuesday, the day after Christmas. And we'll talk about something that actually happened on Christmas and something else that happened uh, before Christmas. But I kept wondering, I think I even mentioned it in a podcast last week. How surprised I was that there was no other coaching changes on the Razorback staff. Just knowing how it works and knowing how it goes into all of the different directions whenever there's changes. And in this case, Arkansas changing offensive coordinators and getting Bobby Petrino. I was still waiting and thinking that it's surely there's going to be some sort of change. And it looks like there has been. This is according to footballscoop.com says Luke Fickle, who is the Wisconsin head coach, is looking to be reuniting with a new wide receiver coach. According to multiple sources, uh, they have told Football Scoop that Kenny Guyton, the former Ohio State standout who played for Luke Fickle in the Buckeyes program, will take over the vacated role by Mike Brown as the wide receivers coach in Fickle's Wisconsin Badgers program. That was happening uh, on Tuesday afternoon, and that's the thing is football scoop. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different outlets out there and a lot of different sources and a lot of different places, but football scoop is usually one that gets it pretty dead on and pretty correct. So it looks like Arkansas is going to be looking for a new wide receiver coach, which, again, is not surprising, just given the circumstances. I kept thinking that there was no way I just didn't know how it was going to work having Guyton be elevated to the interim offensive coordinator and then goes back down to wide receiver coach and then sticks around for another year. Like I just, I just didn't see how that was happening. Now I'm going to be honest, at least at the time of the recording of this podcast, uh, I am not sure as far as exactly what happened with Kenny Guyton. Was it something to where he wanted out? Was it something to where, Sam Pittman and, and the staff wanted to go a different direction? Or was it simply an opportunity that was too good to pass up for Kenny Guyton to go and be reunited with a coach in Luke Fickle that he has so much familiarity with and wants to be a part of it? Now, there, there could be a lot of different directions there that it could have ended up being. But, you know, Kenny Guyton being here as long as he has at Arkansas, I think he's done some really good things. Uh, he, he took over the 2022 season as the wide receiver coach. I remember he, uh, of course, was huge in getting Jaden Hazelwood from Oklahoma. Matt Landers was another, of course, big recruit from there. And say what you want about the wide receivers this year, but they were highly touted in the regards of they had, coming from the transfer portal is what I'm referring to, they had a, a lot of offers to some SEC schools. Isaac Tesla, Andrew Armstrong especially, those were guys that, had some some pretty big time offers and they are returning at least that's what they announced and that's what they said and of course with the coaching changes hopefully that stays to be the case but either way um 
I think he's he did an overall solid job. I'm not going to sit here and say that he was elite and, and, and losing him is just like the biggest loss you could ever have. But it certainly was a coaching hire that Sam Pittman made after having to replace Justin Stepp, who I think Justin Stepp's uh, one of the better and great wide receiver coaches in the country. Uh, but I thought that he did a pretty good job. Landed some good transfers. I think some of the wide receivers that have been in place, you know, and Isaiah Satania, you know, guys that came here as freshmen, you know, hopefully they end up working out. But again, I'm, I'm giving him a lot of credit and a lot of praise for it, but also looking at it as, okay, let's see uh, what what that's going to happen here in the next year. Let's see uh, what he's going to do moving forward at Wisconsin, and let's see the direction that Arkansas is going to go because I think – I hate even using the term replaceable, but I do believe Kenny Guyton is one of those coaches that, you know, it's it, – it was nice to have him. I think he did a good job, but I also think Arkansas is going to be fine. But the big question becomes now of who – who is going to replace uh, Kenny Guyton? Now, I made the joke on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, that with Kenny Guyton being out – they just need to bring back old Paul Petrino. You know old Paul, the, the guy that had the, the most, even more monotone and even more boring than Bobby when he had to hear him speak. He's a coach of Idaho, but I, I was kind of making the joke of like, oh man, yeah, bring him back. Just get the gang back together. Why not? Because I remember the amount of, you know, the, the, the counting of steps and the route running that Petrino, Paul Petrino was so like, specific on and made it so crazy for people like we played for him of, uh, just He was on their ankles every single time. Uh, really intense guy. I made the joke that that was going to be the case. Now, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. But there is a little bit of a similarity of what could happen. Because there's been some rumors speculating and floating around that Garrick McGee is the leading candidate to take over the job at Arkansas as the wide receivers coach. There's a lot of speculation of that. You guys remember Garrick McGee. He was the uh, Arkansas quarterback coach under Bobby Petrino in the first couple of seasons. Uh, coached Ryan Casey Dick and Ryan Mallett. And then when Paul Petrino left, because uh, Paul Petrino was also the offense coordinator and wide receivers coach, then you had Garrick McGee take over in 2010 and 2011 as the offensive coordinator and the quarterback's coach. Now, 2010 and 2011, we all know how incredible Arkansas's offense was. Absolutely. But let's also be very clear and understanding that being the offensive coordinator under those Bobby Petrino teams really didn't mean a whole lot because Bobby Petrino was the offensive coordinator. He was the play caller and everything. But you cannot deny the fact that the quarterback development was really great under what Garrick McGee was able to do. Now, after he did all those things, he went to UAB as the head coach, didn't last long there. And since that point in time, it's pretty incredible to think how much he's bounced around. He, was at, he went back to Louisville when Bobby Petrino went back as the associated head coach, the offense coordinator, quarterbacks coach of 2014-2015. So uh, he, he, was, he was there into the mix and, you know, had a, I think, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was during the Petrino years. But he was there for a few years. Then he went to Illinois as the uh, offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach there. And then he left Illinois after two seasons and then was the Missouri, went to Missouri as an analyst in 2018. Then was the Missouri wide receiver coach in 2019 then went to Florida as an analyst in 2020, then became the quarterback's coach of Florida in 2021. Then in 2022, he went to be Purdue's wide receiver coach. And at current state, he's back at Louisville as the wide receiver coach. He was the wide receiver coach for Louisville this past year. So the dude's been all over the place. Now, I want to remember, I want to make sure everyone's clear. I'm not saying that this is confirmed. I'm not saying that this is for sure happening. I'm just saying... This is what's being out there and what's being speculated. And when it gets talked about, usually it's when we got to jump on board and start talking about it. But here's my thing about Garrick McGee. I like Garrick McGee and what he did at Arkansas. I think that he was really good and really well respected in a lot of cases. I know um, I've had some discussions and interactions with him, even post Arkansas, and to which he's been really kind and really cool about, about everything and about discussing things. But I, I'm not going to sit here and just say, okay, they have all you know, the Garrick McGee's coming back there for, if they get him, it's a home run hire and it's just going to be in, insane and, and, and amazing. Like it could be, it might be, 
But at some point, you know, when does the nostalgia take place of saying, okay, are we doing this because we know it's going to be the best thing for Arkansas? You know, is he going to be the best wide receivers coach? Is he going to be the best recruiter? Or is it because it's what's comfortable? It's what's easy. And you know that you can get him to come over here pretty, pretty quickly. That's the ultimate question. I hope I'm wrong. I hope that he is the guy. And I hope that he is the dude that just comes in and makes Arkansas's offense better. And I keep saying, I trust Petrino. I trust Petrino. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. And if he knows something or if he has something that is expected, I think it's going to, you know, again, I'm going to go with it. But it's just hard for me to really just say, oh, man, this is going to be incredible. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be the best it's ever been. Just because it's almost like too on the nose. It's almost too, too crazy. Because like, what if Jimmy Smith leaves? And then you hire Tim Horton. Like, at what point do we start saying, okay, like, it was kind of fun to talk about. But, I mean, do we really want to do this? You know, like, is, is that the direction that we want to go? Uh, I mean, I, it would just be, it's really hard for me to kind of get to that level at this point. But I can be proven wrong. And I will gladly be, to take the uh, full blame for everything if I end up being wrong. Because if it ends up being Garrick McGee as the new wide receivers coach and he comes right in, and Arkansas gets some big time transfers, and you know the wide receivers really start developing, and they look great next season. Then, hey, I'm fine with it. But it's just, I don't know. It just kind of feels crazy. Petrino was enough of crazy him coming back, but now Garrick McGee too. I mean, you're gonna get John L. Smith. You're gonna get old Velt Camp as the strength and conditioning coach. I mean, when does it end? When does it end? But we'll wait and see. It's not confirmed yet. We'll wait and see. But at some point in time, you got to think nostalgia can only take you so far. But we'll see if it actually ends up being Garrick McGee, as uh, some people are talking about on social media. But still pretty wild. Arkansas, man. Unhinged, and I love it. I hope it continues on. Folks, as the weather gets colder, the NFL stays hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. And that's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time than now to get in on the action. The app is easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and so much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, uh, Sam Pittman did get quite the Christmas gift on Christmas Day, which is so funny when you have transfer portal guys or commitments or whatnot on certain holidays because it makes you wonder, or at least makes me wonder as to why, and, and not in a bad way, because a lot of guys, a lot of these kids, especially at the high school ranks, and especially if they're highly regarded and highly rated, a lot of them kind of want to have their own moment. You know, pick it at a time that's random, pick it at a time when... Not many people are watching or not many people are expecting it. And then when you do it, it lights on fire and you're getting the talk of the town and everyone's tweeting about you and writing articles about you and all these things. And I feel like that happens pretty often, pretty often just in sports in general, but especially in the college football realm. But what happened on Christmas Day was Bradley Shaw, the four-star linebacker out of Hoover, Alabama, 6'1", 216 pounds. And he officially committed and signed with the University of Arkansas on Christmas Day. So it was great because he chose Arkansas over Clemson, Notre Dame, Alabama, and Auburn. Um, those are pretty good teams and programs. So, uh, yeah, you'll definitely take him. He was the – how crazy is this? So he is such a bona fide high four-star. But according to 24-7 Sports in the state of Alabama, he's only the ninth best player. But he is the eighth best linebacker of the high school class. So it really just shows you how much talent's in the state of Alabama, but also how big of a get this is for Arkansas. Because we know that linebacker is always going to be something that Arkansas needs more depth on. And I know he's a true freshman, but I have always felt like if you get a highly talented true freshman to play as a backup as a linebacker, then I'm always okay with that. But who knows? Maybe he ends up being so good and so great when he, as soon as he walks into the door, he could maybe just be a contributor or maybe he can be a legit starter. Don't really know. It just depends on once he gets into that position. But it was really good to see Arkansas get some good news and have him officially signed because it was going back and forth. Looked like it was between him, them and Clemson, Arkansas and Clemson. But uh, he ended up choosing the Razorbacks uh, at this point. So now, if you're looking at Arkansas and where the high school ranks uh, have them as far as uh, 
the uh, recruiting rankings go. According to 24-7 Sports Composite Rankings, Arkansas has now jumped up to 26th in the country, uh, right behind Kentucky and right behind Missouri. So, yeah, c- c- you always consider that, folks. Like, you know, people always bring up the whole, like, oh, Missouri and everything. It's like, Missouri got a five-star, and they're still just at 24th. So it's not like they're just head and heels ahead of Arkansas. Same thing with Kentucky. It's like they're right there. I mean, is there really, again, I said this before, is there really a difference between being 23rd and 26th? I mean, seriously, there's not. There's not. But uh, I did move up Arkansas a little bit, and now they're uh, getting closer and closer to getting the whole class together. But as of right now, uh, Bradley Shaw is the second highest rated Arkansas commit. Uh, just right below Charleston Collins, who's the defensive lineman. So I, I was just happy to see Arkansas get some depth. How happy to see Arkansas get some get some dudes that um, can help them out as true freshmen, even. But transfer portal, they're still going to be looking for some guys. Still going to be trying to, to get some more depth at some really important positions. So it's far from over. Still got a lot of players that are going to get added. But at this point in time, it's just nice to see some change there. And nice to see some guys. Um, I'm going to talk about something that I announced last week on the other side of the break in the final segment of the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. So stay with us. You are Locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment of the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Um, you know, I teased something last week about a big announcement coming up, and it was last Friday when I teased it and it was going to be on social media, uh, had some fun with it and kind of just making it sound like there was going to be a, you know, kind of a, I never like directly said it, but kind of played it with the little fact of, you know, with signing day and recruiting and transfer portal and all that stuff. I kind of wanted to make a little play on that when it came to uh, something that happened in my personal life and in my personal career. But for those of you who are listening and maybe didn't see me on social media on Friday, uh, tweet this out, but I'll go ahead and kind of reiterate the fact that I am officially leaving 1037 The Buzz. In fact, this week, this Friday, will be my last day with 1037 The Buzz full time. Uh, it, it is a completely and totally like, professional uh, separation. Like, it's nothing animosity. There's no anger. There's no frustrations. There's no Oh, they fired me or, or, uh, Oh, I'm, I'm leaving because of how horrible it was. Like, there's nothing like that whatsoever. Uh, I could not be more thankful and more appreciative of one Oh three, seven, the buzz and the fine people of signal media and how supportive they've been of me. Even to the time when I announced that I'm leaving, they have just been amazing. Absolutely awesome. And I cannot be more appreciative of that. And whoever, you know, anytime that you get a chance to, you know, work for a company and a station as incredible as the buzz and the signal media, you know, it's something you don't take for granted. It's something you really, truly uh, just look at as an honor and a privilege, which is what I do to be able to do a show on there and have been doing a show on there for four years. It's been the greatest honor of my professional life. And so I'm just very thankful for that. And I'm very thankful for them and, and everything. I just wanted to make sure that that was very clear, but what's happening next for me will be announced and will be talked about here in the coming days. Uh, I'm not doing this necessarily as a, ooh, I'm, I'm going to try to get everybody hyped up again and give a big announcement and, and everything. It's more about timing and about uh, commitments and things of that nature. Just dropped another Sam Pittmanism. So I'll keep everybody updated on that, and I'll let everybody know once it does officially happen of what it's going to be. But uh, the announcement will be happening right at the beginning of the year, the new year. So Monday, Tuesday will be the official announcement of what I'll be doing. But um, yeah, it's just, I wanted to kind of talk more about it here on the podcast because I'm sure a lot of you are kind of wondering like what in the world's going on and why are you leaving? Like what's happening? You know, who, who are you? I've seen so many people just try to guess what I'm doing, which is kind of funny or and also flattering because some of the stuff I'm like, Man, if you think I'm doing that, then uh, you must think very highly of me. Um, but uh, I can tell you that all of you are wrong <laughs> uh, in what I'm going to be doing. But I am excited about it. I really am. I'm excited about this new step and this new chapter in my in my career. 
I think it's, I, I, no, I don't think, I know it's going to be awesome. I know it's going to be something to where uh, it's going to change a lot of things in, in the best of ways. Um, but I don't want to give out too much of that. But the exciting thing for me is, is that I am moving back to Fayetteville. I'm moving back to Northwest Arkansas. And apparently some of you already thought that I was in Northwest Arkansas to begin with and not Little Rock, which it's like, I don't know why. But either way, I, I am moving back to Northwest Arkansas, though. I'm moving back to Fayetteville. Um, there's a lot of reasons as to why, but... Um, my family's there is kind of the most important thing. My family's there, uh, you know, watching my nephews grow up. I want to continue to try to have a, a good relationship with them. Um, you know, my dad and my mom getting older in age and, you know, health always has issues with that. And so I want to be able to be close to them and, and be around them too. So a lot of the personal reasons as to why I'm moving back to Fayetteville, but professionally though, I just always felt like that's that's where I that's where I belong, and I love Little Rock. I really do. All my friends are in Little Rock. I had nothing but an awesome experience here in Little Rock for four straight years. So I love this city, and I love what it's given me. But I, I'm a Fayetteville kid through and through. I, I grew up there uh, from back when there was only you know, jeez, what thirty thousand people in the city of Fayetteville, and. And all the other cities up there in Northwest Arkansas were small, nothing towns. And so that was kind of the, the beginning for me being there. And ever since I left, I've always been appreciative of where I've been and learned a lot and met a lot of great people and enjoyed the times being away from it. But part of me always wanted to go back. Uh, no other reason than, of course, the ones I stated and just where it's where my heart belongs and it's a city that I have so much love for, but let's be honest. I mean, it being there in the heart of where the Razorbacks are at for someone like me who talks about the Razorbacks every single day, it makes sense. So as sad I am to be leaving the city of Little Rock and to be leaving such an awesome company and an awesome radio station like 1037 The Buzz, I'm also excited that I get to be back up in Fayetteville with uh, so many of you, uh, my family, my, a lot of my friends that I have up there, and to be close to the University of Arkansas and the Razorback program. That's that's something I'm, I'm really excited about, and I can't wait to get all that figured out. I hate moving. It's a pain. It's annoying, but it's going to be worth it. And so I just wanted to say thank you to all of you who have been very supportive and uh, said all the very great things about you know, the decision and how I'll be missed. It really means a lot to me. And uh, even all those people that really hated me for doing what I did and really said some really horrible things, uh, I appreciate you too, either way. Uh, but um, I'll keep you updated though. Don't worry. It's not going to be something that's going to be floating around and I'm going to be putting out a bunch of cryptic stuff at each and every day. It's like, it'll, it'll happen here in the next few days. So I just wanted to kind of clarify that for any questions that any of you may have had, but can't wait to see it. Can't wait to announce it. Can't wait to get started. It's going to be great. Appreciate everybody listening into Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at BuzzJohnNeighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.